This is Math 98. We're going to look at section 9.6. We're solving equations with radicals in them. So find something like this. And I wanted to solve it. I want to know what x values make this a true statement, make this equivalent to 5. Um, I want to undo the square rooting. So notice something square rooted is 5. The thing that undoes the square rooting and is squaring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. Right, I can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. If I do that, square root squared undoes itself. And on this side, 5 squared is 25. And then I'm just going to solve this equation like usual, add 5 to both sides. So 3x equals 30, divide by 3, x is 10. I'm going to plug it in and make sure that that works. So I'm saying if x is a 10, this evaluates to 5. So let's see, 30 minus 5, this is a 25, square root of 25 is 5. Yeah, it checks out. And plugging your answer back in and checking that it works is actually an important part of this sort of work. Uh, here's a good example why. So notice we have the uh, same, same sort of setup. And something square rooted equals negative 6. Now, that might make you uncomfortable. It might not. We'll come back to that in a sec. I'm going to get rid of the square root, so I'm going to square both sides. Negative 6 squared is 36. I want to point out, when we squared that negative, we masked that it was a negative, right? The negative goes away. We have no evidence that this came from a negative 6. Same sort of uh, stuff as before. We just have this linear equation to solve. So let's go ahead and subtract um, 8 from both sides. Then we can divide by 4, and I get 7. Let's, uh, let's plug it back in and see what happens. So does this equal negative 6? Uh, 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 8 is 36. So the square root of 36, um, I should put a question mark here because it does not equal 36. I didn't even write the right value. Uh, 36 instead of 63. Sorry about that. That does not equal negative 6. It equals positive 6. So this answer I have to throw out. And if you go back to, um, to our original statement, you can see what went wrong. We're trying to go square root of something and get a negative answer. Square root only spits out positive answers. So one thing to think about with these problems is if you have ever have the square root equals a negative, right away, drop out and just go straight to uh, no solution. And there is no, there is no solution to that. All right, let's take a look at uh, these ones. So this first one, I've got the square root of 10z plus 1 minus 2 equals 0. Well, if I square both sides right now, I'm going to have to multiply that out times itself. How about I get the square root all alone, and then I, can, then I can square it both sides. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And so I end up with this. Now I'm going to square, uh, now I'm going to square both sides. So over here I've got a 4. Over here I've got a 10z plus 1. So from here I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 10. So subtract 1. So it looks like z equals 3 tenths. Let's plug it back in to check it. Let me give myself a little space here. I wrote these problems too close to each other. Okay, let's take 3 tenths and plug it into here. Let's see. Uh, 10 times 3 tenths is 3. So this is a 3. Square root of 3 plus 1 is 4. Uh, square root of 4. So 2 minus 2 equals 0. Checks out. Yep, that's my answer. Again, plug it in. See if it works. Let's do this next one. So the square root's not all alone. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. First thing. Square root's not equal to a negative, so I should be good. I'm going to square both sides. Now I just have this, uh, this linear relationship to, to solve. So I'm going to subtract 5 and then divide by 3. Looks like y should equal 4 thirds. And I can plug it back in to check it. And what I notice when I plug it back in is I have 3 times 4 thirds, so this is a 4. 
4 plus 5 is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. That checks out. And I like that it checked out, and it feels like it should because this was positive. I'm going to do one more like this. Uh, subtract that 7 from both sides. Get that square root all alone so I can think about square, squaring it. Oh, square root is equal to a negative. I'm not even going to waste my time. No solution. You can write empty set, or you can say no solution. Because I know that the square root will never uh, spit out a negative solution, a negative number. So let's take a look at this one. Square root of x plus x equals x. Huh. Well, I have square root all alone, so I'm, I'm going to square both sides. So square this side, square this side. And what I get is x squared. And when I square a square root, that makes the square root go. So this is going to be an x plus 6. And now I want to solve this. And oh my goodness, this is a quadratic, right? Like I have an x squared and an x. So I'm going to get it equal to 0. I'm going to subtract x from both sides, subtract 6 from both sides. And again, now I have this quadratic to solve. So I'm going to factor this. Things that multiply to negative 6 add to negative 1, uh, negative 3 and 2. And it's equals. I can just set the equals on either side. So according to this, x equals 3 or x equals negative 2. Uh, let's check them both. Let's see if they both work. Square root. So my original equation was square root of x plus 6 equals x. So let's plug in that 3 and see what happens. So I'm going to put a 3 here and a 3 here and see if they're equal to each other. It sure looks like it. Um, 3 plus 6 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So 3 works. That one checks out. Let me put negative 2 into there and see what happens with that. Well, you might see right away square root is giving you a negative answer. That doesn't happen. We are going to have to throw out negative 2. Um, but, you know, if I take it a little further, uh, negative 2 plus 6 is 4. And the square root of 4 equals 2. It doesn't equal negative 2. So sometimes when we square, um, these sh the shadow answers come in because we're masking negatives. And so it's not, it's not that this answer was a negative. That's not why we threw it out. We threw it out because when we plugged it in, it tried to make this make the square root equal a negative. So one of these answers could end up being negative. We throw it out in the check, not just because of its negativity. All right, let's take a peek at this one. I'm going to get that square root all alone, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. All right, square root's all alone, so I'm going to square both sides. So this left side, square root of a square, um, or square of a square root, undoes it. Now over here, if I'm going to square this, remember this means times itself. This means y minus 2 times y minus 2. You have to multiply it out. It becomes y squared minus 4y, right, negative 2y twice, plus 4. And again, I have a quadratic to solve. So what I'm going to do with this then is uh, get it equal to 0, see if I could factor it. So subtract y and add 2 to both sides. Uh, things that multiply to 6 add to negative 5 would be negative 3 and negative 2. So it looks like x must equal 2 or 3. All right, let's check it. What was that original equation? Okay, let's plug the 2 in, see if it works. 0 equals 0. Yep. Let's plug the 3 in and see if it works. Um, 3 minus 2 squared of 1 is 1. Yeah, they both work. So in this case, we can keep both of those answers. All right, two problems to work on here. Um, this is a lot like the last ones that we did. Let's get that square root all alone, and then we can square both sides. So I'm going to add m to both sides and subtract 2 from both sides. Um, okay, square root's all alone, so square both sides. Square root squared undoes itself, so I get that m plus 4. Over here, remember when you square something, that's times itself. This is m minus 2 times m minus 2. However you like to multiply them out, do it. I've got an m squared. I've got 2 negative 2m, so minus 4m. 
and then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. I'll keep going from here. I have a quadratic. Get it equal to 0. So subtract m and subtract 4 from both sides. Oops, that should be an m. Okay, go to solve this. I could factor an m out. So according to the quadratic, m equals 0 or 5. I'm going to check them just to see, make sure no shadow answers creeped in there. Um, let's see, put a 0 in there. Square root of 4 does not equal negative 2. I'm going to throw that out. Um, throw the 5 in there. 5 plus 4 is 9. Square root of 9 equals 3. Yep, checks out. So m equals 5. There it is. Move it over. All right, the square root is not all alone here. So let's get it all alone. So first thing I'm going to do is add 16 to both sides. Right, this is like 2 times the square root minus the 16. So just think of it as 2 times something. Right, you can think of that just as a variable that you're solving for. You want to get that all alone. So add 16, divide by 2. Just divide by 2. So this equals 16. So I want to square both sides to get rid of that square root. And I don't necessarily know off the top of my head what 16 squared is. So I'm going to get my calculator and just say, okay, 16 squared. 256. And keep solving, subtract 2, and then divide by 4. Sixty-three point five. Plug it in and see if it works. I'm using my calculator to plug it in. So I'm going to say 2 times the square root of 4 times my answer was 63.5. Um, I'm just going to say give, use that last answer that I had. Plus 2. Close the parentheses and then subtract 16. And I should get 16 as an answer. Yes. Okay. That was correct. Let's give this one a go. I've got a square root all alone and a square root all alone. You know what? I'm just going to square both sides right here and now. So square this side, square this side. Again, just doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. S square root squared, square root squared goes. So I end up with this linear equation. And like someone said in the forums, fives look like S's. Um, there's another one. Just this linear little equation to solve. Let's subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 3 from both sides. Looks like 3x equals negative 8. Uh, divide by 3. x equals negative 8 thirds. Who wait? All right, well, let's, let's see what that does for us. Uh, I'm going to plug it into the left-hand side. I'm just going to do this on my calculator. So 2 times negative 8 thirds minus 5. That gives me a negative number. Square root in a negative number isn't going to work. So I think that I'm going to throw this out. Let me see what happens on this side. 5 times negative 8 thirds plus 3. That's also a negative number. Yeah, so the, I have to throw it out because I can't plug a negative back in and get an answer. So I'm going to say no solution. There's no real solution is really what I should write. All right, take a look at this one. Square root of x uh, plus 3 equals square root of x plus 5. And the x plus 5 is in the square root, right? But the 3 is not in the square root on the left-hand side. So I have the square root isolated in one side but not in the other. If I try to subtract this, I'm not going to be able to combine those. I'm going to square both sides right now. And I'll get rid of at least one of those square roots. So over here, I have x plus 5. Now, a little bit of scratch work for this. If I square this, it means times itself. So this is this. And let's multiply that out. Uh, square root of x times square root of x is x. 3 times square root of x, and another 3 times square root of x is 2 of them. So that would be 6 square root of x's. And then 3 times 3 is 9. 
well, interesting. I did this. I I got rid of one square root, but I still have another square root lingering. Um, you know what I'll do now is I'll isolate that square root and uh, square both sides again. So how about I subtract x from both sides to get get rid of this? I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides as well. And I get that. Let's keep going from here. Divide both sides by 6. Square root of x equals negative 2 thirds. Well, if this wasn't negative, I'd keep going. But I think this has no solution because I'm trying to go square root, then giving me a negative answer. Let's go ahead and give another one like this a try, see what happens. All right, I've got square roots on both sides. One of them's isolated. So how about I square both sides, see where we get. Over here, uh, squaring, squaring the square root cancels it out. And this one, I have this thing squared. A little bit of, little bit of workspace for me. Remember, this mean times itself. So I'm going to say this times itself. So this times that is just x minus 2. And notice I have it times 3 and it times 3 again. If I add those together, that would be 6 of them. And then 3 times 3 is 9. And I can combine up some like terms here. x plus 7. So there's my left side after I square that. All right, so I multiply this out. One of my square roots is gone. I have another one. How about I get this alone and then square both sides for it? So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 7 from both sides. So now I'm here. Now, dividing both sides by 6 at this point is going to give me some fractions I don't really want to deal with. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to square both, both sides here. Now if I do that, 6 squared gives me 36. And that's times x minus 2. And if I square this side, that's going to end up being a 9x squared. I get a negative 18 twice, so negative 36x and plus 36. I can distribute that into there, so I've got a 36x minus 72. And now I have a quadratic that I want to get equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 36x from both sides and add 72 to both sides. And before I go to solve this quadratic, I notice uh, these are all divisible by 9. I'm going to divide it. I'm going to factor out a 9 first. So now I can factor this part that's in here. Uh, negative 6 and negative 2. So it looks like x equals 6 or 2. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, without checking them, going against my own advice, I know that they both work. You could, you could plug them back into the original and see that they both work. All right, lots of manipulation with this. So take your time and um, send me any questions or post them in the forum.